There is a great diversity of life on this planet. You know, the earth is pretty remarkable. It's the only place in the planet that we absolutely know for sure life exists. And when you look at our planet, we can see all sorts of living things. You know, parrots and uh, gazelles and, uh, you know, trees and flowers. But not just trees and flowers. There's so many different kinds of trees and so many different kinds of flowers. You've got you know, little creatures and and big creatures. You've got some creatures that are so small, you you can't even see them unless you're looking at them through a microscope. But then you also have some organisms that are so huge, you know, you stand next to it and you look like the tiny microorganism next to the, the, the tree, for example. You've got some organisms that are no longer on our planet, things like uh, dinosaurs and mammoths and things of that sort. And how different all these creatures are from one another, as different as a human may seem from a mouse, or as different as a tree may seem from a a scarlet macaw, they all have some things in common, six specific characteristics in common. So what do all living things have in common? What six characteristics do we share? Well, let's take a look. And you can add this to your science notebook on the next blank page. So the first characteristic that all living things have in common is that they're made of cells, number one. All living things have cells. Now some creatures, they have lots of cells. Some creatures only have one. How many of you remember learning about cells? Probably in fifth grade, I bet. Yeah? All of you. That's good. That's good. So, what do you remember about cells? What do you remember about cells? Well, you look at the pictures on the wall, and maybe that sparks a memory or two. All living things have cells. Again, some creatures are only one cell big. Their entire existence is one single cell. Their whole body is only one cell. But then there's creatures like you and me. We have lots of cells, right? Now, uh, Andrew, you mind standing up here for a second? Yeah, come on up here. Andrew and I have some similarities, don't we? Mm -hmm. Come on, face these guys. We both have hair. We both have two arms, right? How many ears you got? Yeah, I got two ears. Mine are obviously much bigger than his. I got big ears. Does that make me a good listener, maybe? Probably not. I don't know. I I don't listen very well sometimes. That's okay. Anyways, yeah, so we have some similarities, right, him and I. But we also have some differences. The main difference, probably, that you notice between him and I is I'm bigger than he is. That's probably the first thing that you notice, right? Now, if that's true, if I'm bigger than Andrew is, does that mean I have bigger cells? No, good, it doesn't. Our cells are about the same size. You look at his muscle cell, it's about the same size as my muscle cell. If you look at his skin cells, the same uh, color and uh, size as my skin cells. If you were to count the number of muscle cells or skin cells, that's where you'd see the difference. I have more of them because I'm bigger. Does that make sense? Now, if we were to bring an elephant in the room, much bigger than you and me, right? Does that mean an elephant must have bigger cells than me? No, it just has more of them. All of our cells are generally the same size. They're tiny. Uh, and certainly we see bigger size. That means more cells. Thank you. So the definition that we're going to use for now for the word cell is that a cell is the smallest unit of life. It's the smallest piece That can carry out life's functions. A couple years ago, I must have been a really good boy because Santa Claus brought me this thing. Yeah, you recognize this? What movie is it from? Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, new one's coming out pretty soon. This is a model of the Millennium Falcon. Does anybody uh, know what uh, it's made of? Yeah, it's a Lego model. That's right. So if you look at it from a distance... 
My Lego model looks pretty much like the Millennium Falcon spaceship from Star Wars, doesn't it? But uh, if you look at it closely, you would see that it really isn't a spaceship model at all. It's just a tiny bunch of tiny pieces kind of stuck in a specific place. All these little Legos put together in a specific place to make this model. How many Legos? I think there's like 350 of them all together to make this model. Uh, the Legos have different sizes, different shapes, different colors. Some of them are flat. Some of them are long and thin. There's a cool circle one with a neat kind of painted graphic on there. All four of these pieces are the same, and they kind of make up that top part of the ship there. When you look at it carefully, you look, when you look at it up close, you'll see that it's not a spaceship at all. It's really a bunch of small pieces stuck together. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The same thing is true with you and me. When you look at a body, you're really seeing a bunch of small living Legos called cells. Now, obviously, you can see each Lego when I hold this up. You can see the Legos there. But our, eye, our, our eyesight isn't good enough to, uh, to detect the um, cells that we have in our body. You need a microscope to see those. Does that make sense? All right. Now, I must have... A uh, hundred trillion. Is that a big number? That's a huge number. Go ahead. Write on your paper. Write a hundred trillion. How many zeros do you need? You got space. You can fit it. Figure it out. How many zeros do you need for a hundred trillion? Raise your hand when you think you figured out how many zeros you need. It looks like you're at a billion there. Keep going. That's only a billion. You need a hundred trillion. That's the number of cells in a large human body. How many did you get? Fifteen's too mil too many. How many did you get? How many? How many? More. Hundred trillion. How many? Fourteen zeros. That's right. Fourteen zeros. Oh my goodness, that is a large number. So what does this number have to do with anything? It's the approximate count of cells in a large adult human body. 100 trillion cells. When it comes to 100 trillion, this, this number is so big. Uh, how many of you would like to have 100 trillion dollars? Yeah, where would you keep it though, right? <laughs> you wouldn't have a space. But here's the thing. Let's say you could spend this money. Let's say you got 100 trillion dollars today how long would it take for you to spend a hundred trillion dollars? Listen, if you spend a thousand dollars per second, a thousand, listen, thousand dollars per second, every second of the day, even when you're sleeping, somehow you spend your money, I don't know. But if you could, how long would it take you to run out of money? Three days. Three days? Five days? days. So about a month? How many days? Like six lifetimes. Six, six lifetimes. lifetimes? So hold on. Uh, let's say the average person lives to be 86 lifetimes. It would be 480 years. <laughs> That's not big enough. It'd take longer than that. I'll just, I'll just tell you. And if you don't believe me, you can calculate it yourself. Listen. If you had a hundred trillion dollars, okay, listen, hundred trillion dollars, and you spent a thousand dollars per second, every second, it would take over three thousand years to spend all that money. Do the math. You don't believe me? Do the math yourself. I'd like you to add these two vocabulary words to your notes. The first one is unicellular. Basically means one cell. And the term multicellular, which means more than one cell.
Can a creature be both unicellular and multicellular? Or is it one or the other? Yeah, at any moment, a creature is either or. But there was a time when every single one of us was unicellular. That one moment. That's right. Now, we were only unicellular for a few minutes. After a few hours, I think we made our first division, became two cells, in which case we became multicellular. Anybody want to guess at the part of speech? Is unicellular, what kind, of, what kind of word is that? Is that a noun, a verb, adverb, adjective? What is it? Yeah. Adjective. It describes a creature, doesn't it? Good job. A second characteristic all living things have in common is that they sense and respond to change. All living things sense and respond to change. It's pretty easy to think of how we can sense things, right? We have eyeballs, we have ears, we have, you know, skin to feel, we have taste, all of our senses. And we can respond to things, you know, obviously. If we see a uh, car coming down the street and we know we need to cross the street, we can sense the car's coming so we can respond by waiting until the car has, has passed before we try to make it across it's a little more strange to think about plants sensing and responding, but it happens all the time, especially right about this time of year. As plants begin to sense shorter hours of daylight and cooler temperatures, chemical reactions start to occur within the cells that cause them to eventually uh, kill their leaves off, right? And, well, right, right this, as the leaves start to die off, they change colors and then they fall off. So even plants sense and respond. Here's a vocab word for you. But sometimes the response to a stimulus is controllable. You can choose what to do. If you start getting hot, for example, when you're out there running a mile on a 100 degree day, you can choose to go get a drink of water. You can choose to sit in the shade after you're done, right? Sometimes responses to stimuli are uncontrollable. Nobody in here can control when they sweat. It's automatic. Body temperature starts to go up, and so your body normally will release sweat to cool yourself back down. It's not like you control that. That's getting hot. I better sweat. Mmm, sweat. No, it just happens. All right, number three, living things reproduce. Living things reproduce. This is one of the most important parts of living things, something they can do that non-living things cannot. Now, most of the creatures we think about in, in the world, most of the animals that we think about, um, they're a result of two individual parents combining their genetic material to create a brand new unique organism. Most of the creatures we think about. If you ever feel bad, if you're having a bummed out you know, day and you just feel depressed or sad, there's something you can do to instantly help yourself feel better. And that is go on Google and do an image search for baby animals. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you right now. If you do that and you start flipping through the pictures that you find, oh, dude, you're going to feel better. You are. You're going to feel better. Cute little, especially when you get to little baby hedgehogs and stuff like that. Oh, man. Those little things. I just want to squeeze them until they pop. They're so I cute. <laughs> I know that's evil, but they are cute. Adorable little things. Little chicks, little, little ducklings, little pig. There's a, there's a picture of this little pig. You got to look at this thing. I almost don't want to eat bacon anymore, but I, I, you know, I do. I like bacon. So again, when it comes to reproduction, uh, the main way we think about reproduction in living things is with two parents involved, 
Uh, and then, of course, there are some creatures that can simply split themselves in half. So, the term sexual reproduction applies to organisms that reproduce using two cells. Now, let, let's not get weird about this, okay? Mr. Simpson, it says sex on there. <laughs> no, I, I know. I wrote that. I wrote that on purpose. Notice it says usually two parents. That does not imply that most living things require two parents to raise the offspring. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about usually two parents, meaning two parents had to somehow get their genetic material together to make offspring. Some creatures, most creatures that I could think of, after the uh, eggs have been fertilized, the parents take off and let the eggs kind of fend for themselves. All the insects do this, or most of them do, I should say. A lot of fish do this. Then you have creatures like us. We don't just, you know, reproduce and let the baby fend for itself. In fact, if we did that, there wouldn't be any humans left because we wouldn't survive. We are very dependent on our, on our parents. Some living things can reproduce all by themselves. We call it asexual reproduction. One single individual can create offspring, usually by splitting in half through a process that's actually pretty complex, but seems simple. And the organisms just kind of split in half. Yes? Sense and respond. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay, uh, number four, they all have DNA. DNA. I know a lot of you have heard about this molecule. You've probably seen pictures of it. Actually, if you did the microscopes online activities last week, you did the uh, powers of 10 activity where you got to zoom in, started in space, zoomed into the earth. Remember that one? Eventually zoomed into a leaf and you saw the cells and you went in and saw the DNA of the, of the cell. So what does DNA do for the cell? What does DNA do for the cell? Well, DNA can be thought of as instructions for living. Good question. Yeah, DNA is actually an abbreviation for a molecule called deoxyribonucleic acid. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to pronounce it together. Okay, repeat after me. Deoxy. Deoxy. Ribo. Ribo. Nucleic. Nucleic. Acid. Acid. Now we'll do it in bigger chunks, okay? Deoxyribo. Deoxyribo. Nucleic acid. Nucleic acid. Okay, now we'll do the whole thing. Ready? Deoxyribo nucleic acid. Deoxyribo. <laughs> you guys are like, deoxyribo acid. You got the last part. That's good. Yeah, it's a special chemical that basically acts like a, uh, kind of like a cookbook. But instead of telling you how to make casseroles and cookies, this particular set of instruction tells your cells what kind of cells to be and where in the body they're supposed to go and what they're supposed to do. It's like the instruction manual. How did I know how to put this Lego model together? Yeah, if you've ever put Legos together, they're actually really genius uh, as far as how simple the instructions are. It's just pictures. Sometimes numbers and words, but mostly just pictures. That would be kind of like the DNA. If I were to just start off with a bunch of little pieces and assemble them however I wanted, I wouldn't have ended up with this. I followed the instructions, and that's how you are made. The cells in your body were created using this, this set of instructions called DNA. And it continues to provide your cells with the instructions they need to continue uh, carrying out the life processes that they need to do. All living things use energy. Energy comes from the food we eat, specifically this molecule called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. <coughs> Kind of like a little rechargeable battery that your cells use. You know when your iPads die, we recharge them each day, you know, try to get the battery life maintained. Same thing's true in your body. 
You've got little battery packs floating around in your cells called ATP. And in order to recharge them, you don't plug yourself in. Please don't try that. <laughs> That's not going to help you. <laughs> Instead, we eat food. And as we digest our food, it gets broken down into certain chemicals that certain, some parts of our cells can, can use to recharge our ATP battery packs so they can continue to keep your cells going. Last one. Living things grow and develop. Sometimes growth is just getting bigger, like bacteria. Just get bigger and have a moderate amount of development. Or it could be a large amount of development. Classic example would be like the, the butterfly, right? Learned about that when you were in kindergarten, probably. Learned that big $10 word, metamorphosis. The kindergartner comes home, hey, what did you learn today? We learned metamorphosis. Oh, you did? I was all excited. They're learning science. You metamorph what, what, what's metamorphosis? Butterflies. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I guess that's good. At least they're kind of on the right track, right? Six characteristics of living things. All living things have cells. All living things sense and respond to change. All living things have DNA. All living things use energy. All living things grow and develop. All living things reproduce.